So in the last part we created this. Rather boring if you ask me. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit more interesting. We're going to be creating a migration. So what is a migration? A migration is a type of version control for your database. So for our code we have version control like git or svn. Migrations are essentially the same thing, but for your database schema. They allow a team of developers to modify the database schema and stay up to date on the current schema state. Migrations are typically paired with the schema builder, which is included with Laravel, to easily manage your application scheme. Now that is a definition taken from the Laravel docs. If you don't understand then don't worry, it will become clear eventually. So to create a migration, we're going to open our terminal. We're going to say php addison migrate colon make and we name a migration exactly what we would exactly how we would say it. So we're going to call this create users table. So once this is done, we can go back to our code editor. And if we go to database migrations, we'll see the file here. Now we have two methods here. We have the up and we have down. Inside up, we're going to create the table and all the fields. In down, we're going to destroy the table. I'll explain why we have these here in a moment. For now, let's say schema create users and we're going to pass in a closure here. We're going to pass in a table parameter, which is an instance of illuminate database schema blueprint. And inside here, we're going to say table increments ID. We're going to have table timestamps, which is basically just two fields created at and updated at. They're both date time and the interesting part about this is when you come to use these timestamps in your application Laravel automatically converts them into carbon instances but we'll get into that a little bit more later on for now we're going to add some more fields we'll say string name table string password and table string email in our down function, we just need to say schema drop users. So now this file is created, it's complete. We're going to actually run the migration. So we can say php addison migrate. And I forgot to set up my database credentials. So we're going to open up our database configuration. We're going to set password to my password and we're going to set the database to the database that we created. So now let's give this another go and if we go back to our database, hit refresh, we'll see this users table here. Now don't worry about this table, just don't touch it, don't delete it, don't just ignore it completely. Laravel uses this to determine which migrations have already been run. So we just called this code here. But why did we add this? If we go back to our terminal and we run php addison migrate rollback enter and we refresh that's going to delete the users table altogether. Now this is especially useful if you make a mistake in your migration and you want to roll it back so you can rewrite it saved my skin a lot so now we're just going to redo this we're going to just check that's that yep and now we're going to close this file we're going to create one more migration create to do's we'll call this create items table and we're going to edit this file we're going to say schema create items 
we're going to pass in our closure and our table we're going to say table increments ID and table timestamps just like before and just so we don't forget we're going to also add this here so what we're going to need for our items we're going to need a integer which will be the the owner ID which will be basically the user that created the item we're going to have a string which will be the item name and we're also going to have a boolean done which will determine whether the item is complete or not so we can close this we can go and run a migration and we can refresh here and just check that it worked which it did perfect that's our migrations complete so now we want to seed the database so what is seeding seeding is essentially just populating a table with data if that seems a little bit foggy don't worry you'll get the hang of it so we're going to go to database seeds we're going to create a new file uses table seeder.php we're going to create a new class uses table seeder and it's going to extend seeder we're also going to have one public method called run now the first thing that we want to do is we want to clear this table if we seed this table and then we seed it again later on we're going to have two sets of the same data and obviously we don't want that so we're going to say db table uses delete and that's going to remove everything inside this table now we're going to create an array and this is going to contain our users so we'll have just one user for now his name will be Terry his password will be hash make we'll just set it to the same as the username now notice how we're using the Laravel hasher and the email will be just a dummy email so once we have this array we're going to insert it into the database so we're going to say db table users insert and we're going to pass in that array so now if we go to our terminal and we say php addison db seed we don't get anything back which is not a good sign we've clearly missed something oh here we go we forgot to call it inside our database seeder so we need to go here we need to uncomment this and we just need to add that s that we added so now if we go back php addison db seed we get this so if we go to our database and we refresh here there we go there's the data that we just inserted now we need to do the same thing for our items table so we're going to create a new file items table seeder class items table seeder extends seeder we're going to say public function run and we're just going to copy this into here we're going to rename this to items same with this this and this and we're going to remove everything here so what were those fields we have owner ID we have name and we have done so the owner ID will be the ID of the user that we just created which is one so we can enter that in the name of the task will be pick up milk and this won't be done yet we'll also add another item owner ID will be one the same as earlier the name will be walk the dogs and done will be true we'll add another one owner ID equals one name equals cook 
lunch, cook dinner, and done will be false. So if we go if we go to our database cedar file, we duplicate this line, replacing the first parameter with the name of our new cedar, which is items table cedar, and we go to a our command prompt and run the same command our table will be seeded hopefully as you can see we have all the items just as expected 